Hi again, everyone. Chris Tisdell here again. Thanks for tuning in. In this presentation, I am going to continue my live streams on linear systems. Now, in the previous video, we talked about the most basic linear system, two equations, two unknowns. In this video, we're going to talk about two equations with three unknowns. So geometrically, this is looking at planes, okay, two planes. How can two planes intersect or what is the geometric relationship between two planes? Okay, so I'll show you some examples of some linear systems of this type in a minute, but let's think about what the outcome of the solution space can be. Okay, so the first situation is that there's no solutions to this problem. So that just means geometrically there's two planes and they're parallel and they never touch. Okay, the second situation is that there are infinitely many solutions. So the two planes touch but along one line and there's an infinite number of points on a line. And the third situation, again, infin infinitely many solutions. This is when the planes, the two planes are identical and they sit on top of each other. Okay, so let me give you a picture. I'm going to use GeoGebra here to see, see how we go. So let me bring in GeoGebra. Okay, and so you can see here this... The, the gray is just the xy plane. The, 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 the blue axis is the, the, the z axis. Okay, you can see here that this is the plane up here. And if I put in this plane as well, and I shift it around a bit, you can see those two planes never touch. They're parallel planes. So this would be a situation where there are, is no solution. Okay, so this linear system has no solution. Okay, so if I take that one off and put this one in, you can see, well, okay, these two planes do intersect and along this line. So there are an infinite number of points on a line, so there are an infinite number of solutions to this problem. So this would be the second case, the, the two planes intersect along a line. And lastly, let's keep that same plane and look at uh, this plane 2x plus 2y plus zigzag equals 4. Well, it's just identical planes. Okay, and you can see GeoGebra has simplified it. That's why it becomes a little bit darker when you click it on. They're sitting on the same, exactly the same points. They intersect everywhere um, along the plane. So there's an infinite number of solutions. Okay, so a good question here is, well, hang on, Chris, what about intersecting two planes intersecting at a point? Okay, if you can show me two planes that intersect along a point, I'll be very impressed. Try it, see if you can find one. All right, so they're the three situations. So here, remember from the previous video, we can convert a linear system into an equivalent, more basic form that will reveal the nature of its solutions by doing these three things, a combination perhaps of these three things. We can interchange equations, we can multiply, oh, let me fix that up, multiplying an equation by a non-zero number, we can add a multiple of one equation to another equation. Okay, so let me give you an example using the, the two equations, three unknowns type problem. So here's our linear system. The unknowns are x, y, and z. So you can see what I've done here, and this is one I've created earlier, I've taken equation two away from equation one, and that's eliminated the x's. So I get this kind of equation now. Now I haven't changed the, the nature of the solutions there. 
And what I've done then is multiplied this new equation by one-fifth, both sides by one-fifth. Again, I can do that because it, it, it doesn't change the nature of the, uh, the solutions, okay? So basically, I've done this and this. Okay, so what I have now is I've written down this simplified system just by using this new equation and the first equation up here. Okay, all right, so what, what can I do now? Well, I've got a simplified system. I can't get X and Y or Z explicitly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce a parameter. Okay. So in the second equation, I've let y equal lambda, and then I've rearranged it to make z the subject. So I'm going to get z in terms of lambda. Okay, so I've let y equals lambda. You could let z equals lambda if you wanted to. It's not important which, which one you do, but one of these. Okay, so I've got y equals lambda, z equals 5 minus lambda, and I back substitute both of those into this equation here to get x. So I rearrange, make x the subject, and then replace y and z with lambda and 5 minus lambda respectively, and you get this. So what have we got now? We know, we, we, we sort of have some intuition here that these two planes are going to intersect along a line because there's one parameter, a line is one dimensional, okay? All right, so what have we got? Well, if I, um, actually I can probably go down here. If I let the vector x be x, y, z, then that's just um, writing out this, it's negative one plus lambda. Y is the parameter lambda and z is five minus lambda. Now what I can do is break up this uh, vector into bits that gives us the geometric properties of what turns out to be a line of intersection. So what I'm going to do, this is I'm going to bring out the numbers, so negative 1, 0 and 5. And in the second bit I've got lambda, lambda, negative lambda, so there's a common factor of lambda. And I'm left with 1, 1 and negative 1. And this is a line, so lambdas between negative infinity and positive infinity. Now, this tells us the geometric nature of our line and the, and the solutions. This represents the line passing through this point, the point negative 1, 0, 5, and it's parallel to this vector, 1, 1, negative 1. Okay, so let's write down the solution. So the solution is the set of points on the line, say L, that passes through the point negative one, zero, five, and is parallel to the vector, say V is this vector here, one, one, negative one. So there are an infinite number of solutions. They lie, they're the points that lie on this line, okay? infinite number of solutions. So the two planes definitely touch, and they touch along a line, and that's the equation of the line in, in parametric vector form. Okay, so that was an example where the two lines, or the two planes touched along a line. Okay, let me show you another linear system. Here we've got two equations, two unknowns, Oh, sorry, three unknowns, x, y, and z. 
And you can see here that what I've done is I've taken two times equation five away from equation six to eliminate the x's. Okay, now if I do that, these things disappear, these disappear, these disappear, and I'm left with positive six on the other side. So what does this tell us? Well, it says basically zero equals six. Well, hang on, what, what does that mean? Have we broken mathematics? No, it tells us that these equations, we've, we led to something that doesn't make sense. So these equations are what's called um, not well defined or not well posed, right? This problem is not well posed. So these, this is a situation where there is no solution. The two planes are parallel. Okay, so I've taken two times the equation five away from equation six. You could just multiply um, equation six by one half. And what will you get? You'll get x minus 3y plus 3z equals 5. So what does that tell you? It says x minus 3y plus 3z equals 2, but x minus 3y plus 3z equals 5. So how does that work? It's clearly there's something wrong because the two left-hand sides are equaling different values, 2 and over here 5. So there's a problem, right? That definitely these two planes do not intersect. So we, we realize that we're talking nonsense here. We conclude that the planes are parallel and, and not the same, and there is no solution to this problem. Okay, what about the third case? Well, I'm glad you asked. Two equations, three unknowns. Here, you can basically see that the second equation, equation 8, is twice times the first equation. Now, I've taken sort of two times equation 7 away from equation 8, but you could just multiply equation 8 by a half. And you're led to this equation, which is the same as equation 7. So what does that tell you? It tells you that you've really only got one equation there. So this is the situation where the two planes are identical, they lie on top of each other, and um, again, we're going to have infinite number of solutions, just like uh, um, I showed you in GeoGebra. The planes are gonna lie on top of each other, there's gonna be an infinite number of solutions. Let's work out um, some geometry around that. So. You can see here, really I only need um, uh, to work with, say, the first equation. I've introduced two parameters. Why two parameters? Glad you asked. In the, in the example before when we did the line, we had one parameter. A line is a one-dimensional thing. A plane, two dimensions, so we need two parameters. Okay, so y equals lambda, z equals mu, and I've rearranged and made uh, x the subject down here. Okay, so what, what do we get? Well, similar to what we've had before, we would have x, y, z. So let's replace x with this to plus 3 lambda minus 3 mu, replace y with lambda, replace z with mu, and then I'm going to break that up just like I did for the lines and write this in a geometric form. So the numbers are 2, 0, 0. The common factor of lambda is in these two elements here or, or entries here, so it's 3, 1, 0. And there's a mu up there and there's a mu down there. So plus mu, so negative 3, 0, 1. And this is the whole plane, so both lambda and mu are between negative infinity and positive infinity. So what does this tell you? It tells you, first of all, that yes, the two planes are identical. There are an infinite number of solutions to this problem. And the solution...
is basically this these set of the set of points on this plane which it's the plane that passes through this point and is parallel to this vector and this vector Parallel to vectors, say v1, 3, 1, 0, and v2, negative 3, 0, 1. All right, I'm just looking at the stream now. Yes, I'm reading the comments. I'm reading the comments, everybody. Uh, it's a little bit hard for me to um, keep up with the comments when I'm doing the live stream, but let's take a break. Good to see you're up at 3 a.m., Giannis. And Dramora, yes, I'm reading your comment right now. Okay, so please keep up the comments. Let me, um, let me just respond. Thanks for the comments. Okay. So um, if you have any questions, any comments, you can always put them in the comment section. Let's just recap what, what we've done today. The first thing is that when you have two equations, three unknowns, geometrically two planes, they're either parallel and not the same, they cut along a line or they're identical, okay? You can perform different operations to simplify your linear system and reveal the nature of its solutions. Okay, yes, I know there's a bit of a delay here. Um, I'm going to sign off now, I think. I've finished my video, so I um, hope you're enjoying the, the live streams. And I'll probably do another one on Friday, so I hope you can tune in again, okay? And uh, thanks again for all your comments. Okay, bye everyone. See you.